All right, well, welcome to our Bible study. We're glad you're here tonight, and I uh, appreciate all of you coming out. We've got some folks that are out sick and some out of town and some with loved ones that are sick. Uh, Margaret Thomas is uh, still recuperating from her broken hip, and I suppose that's where Doug and Glory are. Uh, Stephanie's got a, a stomach virus, and Joe and Ruth are out of town. So several people that are sick, and we're just glad that you're here tonight, and uh, we especially want to welcome those that are joining us via the Internet on Justin TV, and we continue to have a good response from that, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. If you uh, are watching over the internet tonight, and you go to our website, which is listed there on Justin TV, you'll find a link to our email, and also our mailing address, and uh, you can send us an email and let us know you're listening in, and we would appreciate hearing from you uh, if you're tuned in by Justin TV. I don't know of any announcements we got for our local folks here, and so other than the fact we were supposed to have youth night tonight, but we canceled it, so we'll announce when the next one's going to be, and uh, continue to pray for the TV ministry, the DVD ministry, the video ministry, this internet ministry, all these outreaches that we try to have, uh, they're very important, and uh, we continue to hear from people as are benefiting from them, and uh, so we appreciate uh, the people that have made these things possible. All right, we're going to be in Colossians chapter 3 tonight. Been studying there for a couple of weeks in Colossians 3. Uh, actually, we've been in the book of Colossians for several weeks, several months, I guess, by now. And uh, a wonderful book uh, with some wonderful truths in it. And tonight we want to look at something that is somewhat controversial in religion today, and that is the, uh, what's mentioned there about the appearing. So let's have prayer, and then we'll get started. Father, we thank you tonight for another opportunity to study your word. We pray as we open it and study it that our hearts might be open and receptive to it. We might be instructed, edified, and built up. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, in Colossians chapter 3, in verse 4, the Bible says there, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Uh, Let's go back to verse 1 and read from verse 1 now, uh, keeping verse 4 in mind. He says, if ye then be risen with Christ. So we we know that that is a spiritual resurrection. Uh, If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Mm -hmm. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear... Then shall you also appear with him in glory. Now, our emphasis tonight is going to be on that appearing. Uh, Last week we talked about Christ, our life. And that's a wonderful doctrine in the Bible. The fact that Christ is our life as far as eternal life is concerned. Christ is our life uh, in relation to the life that we live. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And based upon that new life that we have in Christ, we're assured of eternal life. And he said, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Now, I want us to look at that appearing uh, because there's a lot of controversy today about whether there is this doctrine of the rapture that many people uh, have turned away from today. And I say many people... Uh, I know people personally that at one point in their ministry they believed in the rapture. They, and when I say rapture, I'm talking about the catching away. And you know, we know the word rapture is not in the Bible, but it, it simply means catching away, a catching away. And uh, over the years, I've seen people that have turned away from that doctrine and do not any longer believe in the doctrine of the rapture. Uh, but there's two things in the Bible that are spoken of as being. Christ appearing. And I want us to look at verses in relation to both of those because uh, this is where sometimes the confusion comes. Paul says here, When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Uh, look, if you will, over in 1 Timothy chapter 6. I just want to run some references here initially about the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ in relation to the body of Christ. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, in verse 13, 1 Timothy 6, 13, Paul says, I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. 
that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, notice, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul is admonishing these believers that he's writing to, or, or admonishing Timothy, rather, to admonish people to keep this commandment that he's given them without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the question is, when is that? And that's the question we want to answer. Uh, look over in Titus chapter 2. In Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. In Titus chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Notice now, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So we see that in this passage we're told that this is what we're looking forward to. This is something that we, we have an expectation about. And that expectation is called the blessed hope. Uh, that's not the hope of Israel. That's the hope of the church, the body of Christ. He said looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, if you look in first, uh, I'll tell you what, before we go there, let's look at some verses outside of Paul's epistles, the Hebrews' epistles, that also mention Christ appearing. Look in Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews 9, verse uh, 26. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. As, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and to them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Uh, then in 1 Peter chapter 5, and I'm just reading over these, I'll make some comments in a moment, but I just want you to see uh, that the appearing of Christ is mentioned in both dispensations, both the dispensation of grace and the messages by those outside the dispensation of grace. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. And then the last one is uh, over in 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. In verse... 28, and now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Now, I probably should have done this before I read all that, but before we go further, let me just explain something, because I, uh, I think it's always good that we know where we're going. Uh, somebody told me one time, uh, it's always important that you tell people where you're going in a Bible study so that they'll know whether you got there or not. Now, where we're going with this is this. Uh, there is more than one appearing, and we're going to look at that, but I want you to show that both the rapture, the catching away of the church, in my opinion, is spoken of as an appearing, and those were the verses we read in Paul's epistles. But also, and I would let this error here that's going up. Here's the, the books laid out in your Bible like they're written. And we get over here to Romans through Philemon during the dispensation of the grace of God. And during that period of time, we find the formation of the church, the body of Christ. That body is formed by the preaching of the gospel, the gospel of Christ, not the gospel of the kingdom. Everybody that's a member of that body is one day going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And it's going to be, and it's called His appearing. After a period of time, at least seven years, probably more, but there's a seven-year period concerning Israel that has not yet been fulfilled, and we could put that right in here and call it tribulation. We talk about the tribulation. It's not referred to that specific way, but there is a seven-year period that is called the time of Jacob's trouble, and it is seven years of tribulation upon the earth. It's the 70th week of Daniel. The only week of Daniel 
70 weeks, it was not fulfilled. And after it is fulfilled, the Lord is going to return and establish a kingdom and rule and reign for a thousand years. So the second coming is, going, is spoken of as his appearing, but also the rapture is spoken of as his appearing. And that's where the confusion comes in because they're both spoken of in, in the same way. Uh, now, let's look at, at a couple of verses. Look in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew 13. In Matthew 13... In verse 40, he says, As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Then there is going to be a period of time when there's going to be judgment upon the earth. Uh, go back to, uh, or to Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew 24. Matthew 24. In verse 29. And notice the time frame. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. Now, obviously then the Lord is going to appear in the clouds. What I want to do is I want to show you there's about, and I probably won't get through all of these, hopefully it will, but, and we won't turn to all the references. I'll just give you the references so that if you're listening by other means, you can go back and check these or if you're taking notes here. Uh, and this message you can watch all week on the internet if you'd like to do so. But I want to show you some differences that make it, to me, perfectly clear that the rapture and the second coming are not the same. First of all, first and foremost, and it goes right to the verse that we're reading here, is that the rapture has to do with Christ coming for His church, which occurs before the tribulation period. Uh, the verses for that would be 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians, we'll look at several verses in Thessalonians. But in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, First Thessalonians 1 verse 9. For they themselves show of us what mannering of inner end we had unto you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Now notice. And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, notice, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Now I know that when people take the position that the rapture is going to be after the tribulation or middle of the tribulation, that they... You have to jump through a lot of hoops to explain those verses. But listen, folks, the verse is clear. The Bible says he has delivered us from the wrath to come. Look in chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians 5. First Thessalonians 5, verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Now back in chapter 4, Paul explains how that's going to happen. Look down in verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 13. He said, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, 
Even so them also which sleep in Jesus will 